This talk is about, well, how to provide work for all. Because we need income, and most of us need work to get an income. Anyone here that doesn't have to work for an income here? No one. Okay. So that's fine. Uh, so that's relevant. So um, how do I get an income in the current labor market, but also in future labor markets? Uh, the main thing is that I can match my competences, what I can do, what I could do, with the competences required by employers or clients. Uh, so I'll, I'll have to be looking for the perfect match. But um, the labor market, yes, it's about supply, it's about demand. So we have basically have to match supply and demand in the labor market. This is not just a thing that is important for me to get an income, but it's also important for society at large because the allocation and the quality of human capital is one of the most important competitive assets that we have in our growing societies, as in Europe. Getting the right people with the right qualifications in the right numbers at the right time in our companies is, is the main operation uh, to, um, to remain competitive in, in the world's uh, globalized economy. Uh, the main thing is, of course, that we can do that and, and fix it and leave it that way because uh, the, the matching of supply and demand is dynamic. People change, companies' wishes and requirements, they also change. But there's also bad news. Labor markets are imperfect. We have now seen the fifth or fourth Nobel Prize that was given to people that explain that labor markets are not perfect, as other markets as well. Uh, talk, think about the health markets. So, um, labor markets are not transparent, and that is a problem. Um, I refer to the work on, on recurrent matching that was done um, by the 2012 winners, Alvin Roth and Lloyd Chapley, but also uh, Christopher Pissaridis, uh, who got the prize in 2010 with his search theory. They all hint at the fact that labor markets are not transparent and not perfect. So where does that leave me as a worker? Because I have to live from the labor market and I have the problem uh, that the labor market is not perfect. We can show this because now we are in a time of crisis and unemployment is going up in the Netherlands, in Europe, and it's already up uh, above 8% in the US as well. On the other hand, there's still job vacancies. And you can see in this curve, which we call the beverage curve, that sometimes there is on the horizon, uh, uh, horizontal X here, you can see that unemployment can go up, but at the same time, for instance, in, this is the Dutch beverage curve, in 1999, there was still a fairly high amount of job vacancies. And that is a bad situation. People are out of a job, looking for jobs. Employers are offering jobs, and no one is getting those jobs. In America, in 2011, each month, eight million jobs were posted online, which was already a year of crisis. And in the, same, in the very same month, 13 million people were looking for a job. And that is the problem with labor markets, that they are really imperfect, and um, the Dutch situation here is uh, actually one of the most favorable in Europe. Uh, so this situation, unemployment and job vacancy is far worse, currently also in the US, for instance. And what can we do uh, to, to, to close the gap between uh, the supply and demand of labor? So one thing we have to do, because we want work for all, work for you, one thing that we need to do is to better express the um, content of labor supply and demand. And this should be done by forming um, standardized languages of competences. Because I need to be able, as a worker, to optimally showcase what I can do, but also what I could do, uh, my potential, what I'm capable of. And I cannot just leave that to, um, well, to, to, 
throwing around CVs, diplomas, or maybe telling people what my last job was. Uh, that is not uh, the, the, the full relevant information about my potential, about my abilities. So we need a kind of, let's call it Esperanto in the labor market, where we define people's competences that people have to offer and the competences required by companies or clients in the same language. Uh, so we have a deeper match than just um, trying to match on previous jobs or diplomas. This common language should also include what schools have to offer, because if schools can offer in the same language what they can offer me if I go to the school to enhance my competences, then we have this common language between workers, employers, or clients, and schools. And there's some good news here, because uh, those common languages of competences, they exist, and they are being developed. They exist at the international level, qualification frameworks at the US level. We have a European quali qualification framework, and we have, for instance, in the Netherlands, a national qualifications framework. And we also have competence languages, also at the different levels. It's still in development, and one of the main things is, of course, to relate those different levels to make sure that the Dutch language of competences matches the European one, and also, preferably, also the international one. So that is a good thing in this uh, big mission that we have to try and provide work for all and deal with all the job vacancies that still are there. So, um, but we need another thing. Uh, we need another thing because um, even if I can express my competences in a better way, um, also the things that I've learned informally, because people not only learn at school, you learn by working, you learn by being here at the TEDx conference. So, um, I can do this, and the positive thing is that those languages, they do develop, but um, we need a second step. I need to be able to, well, send out the information about my competences, competences in, in real time. We have already seen a contribution from technology, look at, for instance, at job matching websites. Uh, that's already a major improvement. We also have other systems uh, that try to um, improve the match, the efficiency, the quality, and also the speed of the match. But um, we need a kind of technology that would transmit permanently my competences, also including the development of those competences, not the static ones, because uh, people are uh, in development. Uh, it's human capital that's being developed. The good thing here is that we have those kind of technologies there. You can already see them, for instance, um, at parties where you have devices, applications, where you can find a date. Uh, so you, you, you put in the information about the kind of person you would like to meet. Other people can do that as well. Uh, and this uh, can, be, can be interlinked, can be transmitted, can be picked up. So what we need is a similar thing for the labor market. And a similar thing that also includes, again, uh, the dynamism of the labor supply and the labor demand. So, well, we could put that in an application. We could put it in an app that I would like to call I Learn, and the Alice between the brackets, so I learn and I earn. So, imagine. If we have this common language of competences, we have the transmitting technology, which is there. We've got the technology. Imagine you're walking the streets of Tilburg, uh, and suddenly you get a job offer, because some consultancy firm has detected that the competences they require for a certain job or project, uh, because jobs will not remain uh, full-blown jobs, they will also be divided into projects and tasks, but you're walking the street and you see there is, hey, a 70% match with some um, 
demand for labor in this Tilburg consultancy firm. So you could decide to go in and talk to the people there, and you might, after two hours, well, leave this, this bureau having an employment contract. That is, I think, the future of labor market matching. But of course, um, maybe it's not enough. Maybe my 70% is not enough. And maybe I could go, in that case, to a school, maybe online education, because I might have to step up, say, to 80 or 85 percent. But if we have this common language of competence, I can do that. I know where to go. I know to go where to go to which education, uh, to which provider of knowledge, uh, so I can step up and, uh, and get that job or another job uh, that, that is, uh, would be a, a, a good match or a better match. But um, if we have that in place, and again, uh, this the possibility is there, the technology is there, the language is there, then we would not need another innovation. We have to, we have to innovate social security. Because sometimes, even if I have this, I learn, I earn application and everything functions well, then there might be a, a time when I have to do a major update. Because we will be working until, say, the age of 67, it's now in the Netherlands, uh, 63.1, when people statistically leave uh, as an average the labor market. But suppose we are working to 67 in the future, and we might not even just uh, get another job, but also um, change professions. So I need, in that case, a major update, say iOS 6. If I do this major update, there's not so much time to work. So I need some kind of facility to be able to get some income while I'm updating significantly in order to meet the demands of the jobs to come. Uh, because jobs develop, demand develops. So let's then turn social security into a credit system. And imagine you're b once you're born, uh, the government uh, provides a lump sum of money into your account. Uh, think of the credits that you can get uh, to, for iTunes uh, to, to download music or, or books or anything. So you get some lump sum in this account and you can use it when you don't have the time really to, to work significantly and also update yourself. So this means a system of drawing rights. And it's easy to calculate and also look at inflation, what kind of amount a person would need uh, to do the major training and retraining in her life or his life. If we put it that way, uh, then it means that with my I learn, I also would have the credits in my application uh, for the, the period where I have to really do have some, some, some severe um, and, and significant training. That would be the third step. Uh, that would be the third step uh, that would allow us uh, people to get a job to remain employed, but also to develop in the labor market. So basically, we have the languages, the structure, we have the technology, we could reform social security, and we could make it work. Thank you very much.